G'day guys, Matty from Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping with you again today on another off-grid setup. This on an Avair motorhome. Now this one's a little bit different, um, being the fact that it was super tight, like we were very um, struck for space on this one. So we were a bit hit and miss with where we could put things, but we've ended up getting it in a spot that I'm like really stoked with. So everything is under here. Now we've had to relocate the factory the electro block in this, which is the 12 volt distribution and charging system that Avan use, the old blue electro block. I'll um, flip it around and show you guys in a minute. So we've gone for the Victron Multi Plus 3000 12 volt 120 amp charger inverter here, running on all the factory outlets. This is a plug and play system with these Avans, so really happy with the ability to get that in there nice and seamlessly. So that's running on the air conditioner, which we've got running now, microwave. All of your power outlets outside, uh, three-way fridges before the inverter, so it has zero potential to come on from the inverter when the guy when these guys press the button. Uh, we've gone for 800 watts of solar on the roof. This we've managed to squeeze four of the 200 watt Exotronic panels, and we've done a 2S 2P system, so two in series, and then we bring it down in parallel into the 50 amp regulator. Now, um, one of the panels, unfortunately, in the corner cops a little bit of shade um, probably halfway through the day there's a big satellite dish on the back corner of this it's it's just the way it is um, you know we were going to swap it out for some smaller panels but we did the math we even did the test and i'm getting pretty good power out of that array into the system so happy days here we've gone for the orion 30 amp dc to dc charger for vehicle charging and that is pumping in like happy days here so he's able to run his air conditioner while he's driving a long stinking hot day everything's running in his van and he's able to charge as well as long as he's getting some solar on top of that and that's how that works now i'm going to show you how tight this battery install was now keep in mind this had two 100 amp hour wet batteries in this location that i'm about to show you and it was already kind of tightish those that are familiar with the avans and this little hatch that's underneath will be aware of how tight things are in there so Check this out. Here we go. Happy days. So we've managed to squeeze them in there. As you can see by the height, it is right on par with this, this base level. Now, because obviously we've got all of this stuff on top of this, we've had to customize um, this panel. We've had to um, make a thinner uh, material. Um, so it rests just, it actually just clears these by the smallest of bits. So our mate's got a fridge that's gonna sit here. Um, he's got an angle fridge, which he asked for a couple of extra sockets for that to be able to run from the system. And obviously, because he's got an inverter now, he's able to use these to run the fridge. If, you know, whatever reason he wants to run a higher current fridge, he can do that. So there's the 560 amp hours of power pool lithium batteries. So constant discharge of 250 amps each. So that's a 500 continual amps of discharge there. This multi-plus inverter will never ever get anywhere near those numbers. And that's why we use these because of that high discharge. We're happy days with these ones. So there's the electric block we've had to completely move. Like this whole panel was over on that side there. So now that we've had to do this to get the multi-plus in here, we've had to extend all of the original loom that kind of went over here. And yeah, we found some issues too with some burnt wires on the original charging system, which is just on like, six mil cable anyway so basically this box now is a glorified fuse box controlled by the factory master switches up there all right so nothing changes on this setup this is an overlay setup and now we've got the solar controller here and then we've got the orion 30 amp dc dc charger for vehicle charging now you guys that have the avans you're aware of how they run their power system so it's just like a plug and you just feed it in here and it just kind of coils up and does its thing. Um, there we go, guys. That's pretty much everything down in there. Um, I've got the air conditioner running now, so I can show you that one. There's the Houghton, the Lair 3400, and it got it running on the 16 and it's, it's gone flat out, and that is icy cold. I had it on 18 before and it got the temperature, it cycled right down. And I've been running it now for about an hour and a half and it is like two or two o'clock, 2.30 in the afternoon here in Adelaide. That's what it's using right now. Obviously we're not getting much solar. The sun has casted, um, sorry, that dish has put the shadows on that rear array now, which has pretty much canceled it out. We're not getting much from it, but that is the roof we're dealing with with this one. But take note, it's 97% guys. 
I've been running this air conditioner for an hour and a half and that is what it pulls. It has been consistent between 800 and 850 the whole time. Not bad, like it's up there. It's more than the Harriers that you see me guys do, um, you see me do, but it's still high. Like it's, yeah, it's, even with 800 watts on the roof, that's in peak ideal conditions, you know? So the sun would have to be like directly above, right in the peak of summer for you to get those numbers. And that's relevant for any flat mounted solar panel. So there we have it guys. So air conditioner running, happy days. I will put mains on for you because it's already plugged in. I'll just show you how the fridge will go to 12, or uh, sorry, go to um, gas. You're trying to ignore it? And that's because we're free camping. See, I've got the inverter on. And because the GPO that the fridge is plugged into is before the inverter, when I turn the inverter on at the switch, it won't come on, it'll stay on gas. And that's the whole idea behind it. If, if that was on, that, on the, the factory GPO, well, the fridge would go over to mains power and take note of what your three-way fridge draws when running on mains this is an absorption fridge they're like 300 odd watts thing is you don't know what's happened as soon as you turn your inverter on your fridge will change over to mains you won't even know it but you'll look at your battery monitor and go hang on where's all this power going that's right the fridge so you'll manually have to put it over to gas which is fine but look it's a two and a half thousand dollar fridge with an automatic feature in it for for a reason use the automatic feature it is absolutely mint especially if the systems running it so the wiring systems coming into it are done correctly 12 volt mains and the gas and the trigger wire then the fridge will operate perfectly as it should which is what i like to do so that's it now old mate's got the swift hot water service in this that one there is off the inverter because it is only about a thousand more element so if i were to turn that on you'll see about a thousand watts on top of that, what, 850 we just saw? Let's go have a look. And there it is. So that's the hot water service running. As well as the air conditioner. Now, you're not gonna do that, but old mate, if he runs out of gas, at least he can, which is really cool. And he knows that there will be a sticker here saying, um, you know, limit time off inverter use. But, Hot water services, especially the mains element, the, the switch, you should never leave it on anyway. It's a bad habit to get into. Leaving the hot water service switch on is really horrible. And I'll tell you why, if you, even with an, a, not, a, not an off-grid system, if you plug mains power in and that switch is on and your tank's dry, your element will burn out. Um, I've seen tanks that have check valves that block up from the anode on the Suburbans and then I've seen the tanks get fat and bulge out. You're not gonna run a kettle without any water in it. You're not gonna run a hot water service without any water in it, okay? So very important, especially that hot water, um, that electric element. Do not leave that on if it, you're going to store your van. Obviously, you, 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 know, you purge your water through, you put your tap on your, on your hot water, you put your tap around a H, let it run, spurge all the air out. Once that's done and it's got a clean run, happy days, turn it on. And then you won't get any dramas. Um, what else can I do in this? I'm not going to do any, there's not much um, appliances in this one, guys, but look, we've got the microwave and that's on now. So, yeah, that's still on there for the floor, so you hit that. So that's the Houghton with the microwave at the same time. There we go. I've got the same microwave, actually, so I know they're pretty good. Look at that. There we go. All from the power pool batteries, guys. Not getting much solar, but you know, it's the point of uh, 6.6, 6.7 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. You can do this anytime you want. Just press the button. I've got the air conditioning going at the same time. Oh, there we go. Happy days. I'll do some, try and put some photos of the roof up. I'm not gonna get my drone out. These guys have horses and might spook them. So I'll leave the drone for another day, but I'll get up on the ladder and do a zoom around and try and get some uh, solar pictures for you guys. So there you go, 800 solar, 560 amp hours of lithium, all the Victron fruit, got the Servo GX Touch 50 on the internet as well. So I can see everything, anytime, anywhere. If he's got a question or wants to know what's going on, I can look him up. So enjoy guys.